Well, again, uh, this happened about a year ago, where I suspected Wells of taking down a tank mate, but it didn't. Uh, it didn't uh, prove to be true. But this time, again, I'm suspecting that Mr. Wells took out two koi, the smaller ones. The first one was gone on the first night. And uh, they were the smaller ones that we got about two months ago. And I thought that was a freak accident. I looked all, everywhere for it. I didn't find it. But then for two months everything has been fine. Except I noticed that Mr. Wells changed his location sometimes and his behavior. Not to mention that he stopped feeding um, as much as before, maybe about one-tenth. The new koi were the smaller ones and they were smart enough to hang in the safety of those pipes over there. So that's the little kahaku, the little asagi, the failed sanki, the white one that lost its red. And then uh, the brother of this guy the uh, Hiyotsuri, not this one, with the split, with the badly heel tail, but the other one. And then there was another failed sunkey just like that one, and there was a very beautiful Shusui. And Shusui disappeared three days ago, and I don't see him anymore anywhere. So I'm pretty sure Wells got him because he he stopped because the the little guys were hanging around that those pipes just like they're doing right now. They don't go venture far away from them. That's the new Hiyotsuri. Uh, I saw I saw Wells resting in this corner for a while. Then he was resting there, and then he was resting behind the pipes, which he hasn't done in uh, I don't know like three or four years. He's only been doing it in the beginning when he was much smaller. So he was resting in that corner, probably feeling that this is where the little guys are hiding. And that's how I'm pretty sure he, he's got that uh, shoe sweep. All of them are smallish, like a foot, except for the huge tour, it's a little bigger, but uh, maybe 16 inches. But the rest of them are smaller, about foot or even smaller. Shusi was a good size too, probably about 16 inches. But this Asagi, he's tiny. It's like, <laughs> he's one foot. So I thought, if anybody, he would be gone first. Or the Kahaku too, he was also about the same size. Shusi, uh, Shusi was beautiful. I mean, that was the best. I, I love that fish the most out of that new batch of six koi we got two months ago. But anyhow, there's only four left and we're gonna have to take them out and put them in the Gallon tank for now until we build a separate koi pond for them, for all the koi. And I think I'm gonna put, take out also the two Hiyotsuris and also try to repair that tail split on the old Hiyotsuri by cutting out the improperly healed portion and, and letting it uh, heal and letting it uh, grow back together, hopefully in a normal fashion. Okay, so we're gonna go in and and catch the little guys, put them in the other tank, and do the little procedure on the on the Hiyotsuri. Everybody else is bigger in there, it seems to be okay, except for some smaller masseer, like this uh, two red masseer, Udri masseer, and, uh, and um, Himalayan masseer, the Pudutora. They're smaller, but they're, they seem to be faster and smarter, so they, they haven't been preyed on by wells. 
My other suspect is the Lyriae. But I don't think he could swallow that something that big, nor, nor would he try. I feed this tank well. This Lyriae. The helicopter catfish. I don't know how well you can see him on the bottom. So we're going to have to take out both Hiwaturis right here in the same shot. I think we're going to leave the rest in there for now. It's an Udri, smaller Udri Masir. This is a red Masir. There's two of them in there. That's a smaller Pitotora. Cigar shape. So we're going to leave them there for now and watch carefully. I mean, it didn't look like Wells really was trying. Sometimes he bites the big koi and then he lets them go because he feels they're too very big. He doesn't even want to try and swallow them. He's too lazy. He's not never hungry enough to try to swallow them. But he leaves some marks. I mean, I can tell who, who beat who beat koi because his mouth is huge and it, it's obvious. Once in a while, he buy. I mean, he probably beat once uh, seven stripe carp. Another time he beat, um, he beat several times the uh, giant Siamese carp. Never Masir though, never, never a mark on Masir because again, I think they're smart and, and fast and aware and maybe they don't sleep at night. So he never get a, has a chance to bite them. I'm probably, oh, I'm also tempted to take out that uh, Volta giraffe catfish in the back. It's kind of smallish and she, it's a she. She's kind of smallish for this tank anyway. I'll put it back in the 1800 gallon. I'm thinking, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna go through this. It's been in here for a long time and did okay. But it's kind of, it doesn't look comfortable and it seems to feed okay but never puts on good weight. I don't know what's up with that. Maybe it's not feeding all that, all, all that well as I think. Anyhow, this is the upcoming reshuffle in the 25,000 gallon. four of them and they're in that tank over there. This is the last one. This is the older Hiwutsuri with the split in his tail that healed up wrong. There was a little uh, there was a little flap here so it broke in and a little bit down so that it didn't heal right. So we're gonna try and cut it up so that it hopefully heals back normal.
There is no bleeding, so I don't know if it's going to heal up as I want it to. If you look all the way down, the split occurred all the way to the caudal peduncle, the old split. And there was a little piece that healed up. Right. Wow. Uh -huh. So I try to cut it deep and see what happens. Maybe it will heal up. Okay. So these are the unfortunate koi, turbiuturi, asagi, kohaku, and a failed sanke. That's the one we were just cutting the tail of that guy. Trying to get it to grow back right. So we'll see what happens. These are, these are gonna have to tough it out here until we we build our poi exhibit. <laughs> 